used to actually used to be a part of a group. <laughs> Me too. So this would be something new. Basically, what, what I want to do is talk to you about the ranch, about about the ranch and what you do. That. You know, Larry and others are always telling us how much wood you chop, how many hours you ride your horse, how many hours you do this and that. And what I, what do you really do out there all day? Can you give me a picture? Yeah, but uh, they weren't snowing you. It's true. <laughs> true. It's, somebody once asked me uh, about the ranch, said, uh, when did we ever think we'd have it finished? And I said, I hope never. But um, that's part of the fun. You don't just go there to sit. But um, yes, uh, uh, the normal day's routine is ride. We open the day with a ride. And then I come in and switch clothes and the dirty jeans, and uh, after lunch, uh, there's any variety, and we have priorities on the various projects. Oh, you do? Uh, well, for example, see, the only heat in this little old ranch house is, is two fireplaces, and uh, even many times when it isn't winter out here in California, you know, the, the, the way the nights cool off, why yeah. you're going to have fires. So. Um, you make sure that you've got a stock of wood and you have to have enough uh, wood in advance that it's seasoning so it'll burn. So that is a, that is a big one. Well, right now, we're, we're loaded. We're, we're ready for true next winter. That's what we have been doing. Now, again, that's been a double task because uh, uh, we had a, a freak storm up there uh, quite a while ago, in April, well, not this Queen's April, here. but more than, let's see, it was either a year or two years ago, April, we had a freak storm, snowstorm. Oh. We're at about 2,400 feet on those mountains. Mm -hmm. And those California live oaks, we have a lot of woods on there. Yeah. And the, my man up there said that during the night, it sounded like an artillery barrage with the limbs breaking off all over the woods with that weight of that snow. So. Here was the place all cluttered up. Really, you, 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 it looked like a disaster area. You go under the trees and here are all these great limbs and some still hanging. So that was our wood supply. So what we've been doing ever since then, whenever we had a chance, or whenever some, uh, we have something else done in some spare time, why we still go after those uh, branches. And we remove what I call the brush, the lighter stuff from mm -hmm. them, and that gets piled for winter burning. And uh, then we cut the rest into firewood, and uh, the big stuff gets split, but we have a splitter. <laughs> I remember you got that. I've seen uh, pictures of it being used. Uh, what? I just can't, all this hard work, yeah, I don't understand it. How come you don't just want to snooze or sit back and relax? Or You're out there working so hard. What's the appeal uh, of all Well, that? except because the, the job that I have is a sit-down job. Uh, it, when you're working the hardest, you're sitting the longest. and. Uh, and I, I like all of that, that sort of thing. But um, the, uh, the wood thing, I say, is, is part of it. Let me just give you the, the beginning of the whole ranch, though, and uh, what uh, I mean about whether to finish it or not. Yeah. Uh, I've had a ranch for years, and I had to give one up to be governor. I remember that. And as I began to come toward the end of the governorship, knowing that one another when I started ranch hunting. And some friends of ours uh, had a ranch down at the foot of the hills, uh, but it was a regular working thing, uh, citrus fruit and that sort of thing. And uh, one day, uh, he and his wife and Nancy and I got in the car and he started up this seven mile switchback road through that steep brush cover, those brush covered hills. Well, his wife, she began saying, oh, turn around, there can't be anything up here. And, he knew what he was doing and he just didn't answer. And I was beginning to think with her, I didn't say anything, but I was thinking maybe somebody has a house up here in this goat country, but they, um, and call it a ranch, but mm -hmm. you know, you looked around, you couldn't see. Well, near the crest of these San Inez Mountains, we turned in this private road through some trees and suddenly they're opening up in front of us was this saddle in the mountains. And it's uh, it's great variety. It isn't, when you think of it, it isn't like a ranch with a square fences and fields and uh, you do things. You know, it's scenery. But there's meadows and there are oak forests and madrone trees and uh, 
rock formations and a, a great variety of countryside. And this was kind of what I was looking for, for the riding and all. You, uh, you want a place where it's just fun to ride. And uh, a little house on it had been built in 1872, Adobe. It is Adobe. I saw it described as Adobe style. It's no, actually it's Adobe. Adobe covered with plaster. That's what confuses people, I guess. Okay. You know, you cover them with plaster because the rain will melt the Adobe <laughs> if you don't. Oh. Okay. And uh, uh, the previous owner had, uh, because they were kind of like our first ranch, they lived right down in the valley, in San Inez Valley, and he was a cattle man. So they just had this to uh, come up there and maybe weekend or something, so they didn't really, uh, in fact, most of the time they it was easier to just go back down home. And you sort of took one look at it and said, this, this is it. it. Yes. <laughs> then my friend who was driving had to keep me quiet because I was not bargaining say, and I was ready anything. to say yes right then. <laughs> but uh, he had surrounded the house, two sides, this previous owner, with a, uh, a screen porch, he, he'd added. And it was plastic and screen and an aluminum roof. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to restore the place to kind of the history around it. So that was the one professional thing we had done. We had that, in fact, the first day that we ever had actual occupancy, we started tearing down the screen or around the porch. And I, I understand that you did. I've read various things on the ranch that you did a lot of the work yourself oh, in yes. terms of the tile and cutting the tiles around the fireplace and redoing the roof. Yeah. And now, what yeah. would it take me through it a little? What is? I've never been in there. I've seen pictures of it. I've been on the outside of it. There's a living room and a family room and two bedrooms. It's well, small, five rooms, right? There's uh, uh, yeah, there are two uh, two bedrooms, and uh, one other professional thing we later had done after we were in there was that the our bedroom, the master bedroom, was nine feet wide. <laughs> we took out one of those adobe walls and extended it about another nine feet uh, um, and added a closet. There was no closet in it. <laughs> but uh, yes, we, we tiled the, the floor and we did this. When I say we, uh, that helped uh, Barney, who was the highway patrol driver, mm -hmm. retired now. Uh, uh, he's with us and, and uh, so he was a part of all of this, and uh, we we're quite a team. Did you have huh? ex did you have home improvement experience? I mean, or did, how did you know how to do this? It's just I don't well, the first summer job I got as a kid back in Illinois, I when I was 14 years job. old, was with an outfit that was buying old houses, remodeling them, and reselling them. And before the summer was over, that first summer, I was laying hardwood floor, I shingled roof. I, I painted, so I did learn a few things there. But Barney's quite a craftsman also. But there were other things we'd done. The, the previous owner, and as I say, for convenience, simply because they weren't using as we intended to use it, uh, he had just regular farm wire fence right around close to the house. And uh, we wanted a yard, so we took that out and laid out where we were going to put a fence line. But then I wanted a fence that would be appropriate to the surroundings and the style of the house and all. So I got some drafting paper. That's you know the kind with the little squares on it so you can do things in proportion. Uh, draw an inch and know yeah. that it represents X number of feet. Mm -hmm. And I started drawing various types of fence on this to scale, knowing that I wanted a fence about four feet high. And, and I finally settled on a very rustic fence made out of telephone poles. You cut the bottom off the pole and you use that for the upright I've and then seen, you notch the... Yeah, I've seen the, pictures of it. As a matter of fact, Larry said you're building more of it this week or last week. 400 feet. We've, uh, we have about... Which uh, caused great consternation because everyone thought you already did that fence. So this is a new part of the fence? This is a new one. This is an addition. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, we're enclosing another part near the house. One of the things that um, we're told you like about the ranch so much is that you have a lot of privacy and a lot of isolation up there um, and that you do a lot of thinking and, and about the job is that do you think about oh, the job up there oh sure yes yes and let me tell you why I learned a long time ago and long before this job uh, uh, you can do a lot of clear thinking on a horse 
and, uh, and some of the best ideas come there. <laughs> well, we were told on this trip in particular that you were going to spend a good 10 days thinking about whether or not you want to retire to that ranch in 84. <laughs> have, you, have you been thinking about that at no, that's just a constant thing to be decided. But uh, as I say, that that decision is going to be made at the last possible moment that you can make it. Because I think it's a, uh, either way, you have to be a loser uh, when you, uh, if you, if your answer is no, you're a lame duck, you can't get anything done. If your answer is yes, then they interpret everything as being political and uh, but, oppose you. But you haven't been, I mean, I'm thinking about not so much about, you know, are you going to announce next week or next month or that. I'm thinking, have you been thinking about whether or not you want to spend four more years so that you can hardly ever get to the ranch? I mean, when you go <laughs> over there, do you think, I mean, have you been thinking about that? Uh, that would not be uh, part of the influences. I always said the people tell you whether you should run or not. So uh, I think all of these times and out with the public as I am, uh, I know that Many in the press interpret that as uh, vote-seeking. Uh, they've never stopped to think that, well, first of all, it's uh, a chance to communicate what you're trying to do, but also it's a chance to um, uh, see what the people are thinking. Whatever you decide to do on this, do you, are you want to retire to the ranch eventually? I mean. No, I'll if tell there's you, two I terms, or if think, you want to run for no. governor of California oh. again after oh, that, Lord, no. or oh no, this is this is the last uh, hurrah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I don't think that uh, Nancy and I, we've always had a ranch, and we've always had a ranch within range that we go to, and uh, so I think we would prefer having a. Uh, I can't see me sitting on the front porch with a in a rocking chair. I think that we would uh, always have a home and the ranch. Uh -huh. And the, um, but then anyway, I just wanted to give you the start of the place. So when I decided on that telephone pole fence, well then that's what we we built. And it looks very uh, it does. rustic. Yeah, it does. <laughs> so um, there are other things. Uh, other, you're always, you always have chores because, uh, for example, uh, We've, you'd be surprised, the pruning that we'd done in uh, some of the woods because it had never been done and uh, you'd have tough difficulty walking through them, let alone riding a horse through them. So every once in a while you pick out a place and you, you start pruning to the point that you can ride your horses and then you got a new place to ride. And a new, new if trail. I blindfolded you and brought you out there and set you someplace in the middle of those 600 acres, do you think you'd know, could you locate it exactly? Do you know it that well? Yep. <laughs> Nancy wouldn't. <laughs> well, she's not. I'll cut and brush as much as you are. <laughs> um, I wanted to get into a little bit about, we're, we're told that you get um, briefings sent to you, paper, uh, your national security briefing on paper form frequently. Every day. And that you make phone calls back and forth. And yep. um, essentially, that part of the morning when you catch up on what happened overnight, is that the the main part that you devote to real, getting the works, the day's business out and then they come back and forth if other things happen? Well, um, usually you start the day and try to knock that, that first report off uh, because, uh, you know, there might be things in there that need instant attention. But, no, you, the job goes with you wherever you are and uh, even here in the hotel. <laughs> you, uh, and there's always, uh, yesterday I signed a stack of bills uh, on the plane down from Seattle. Um, there, are, there are things, there are decision papers that come, and uh, I sandwich them around. If, I, uh, if some have been uh, brought down to the house while we're riding, then uh, uh, in that interval for lunch and all, then I, I get at those and, and go back out to the, the other. And of course there are, yes, there are phone calls. And, uh, yeah. Well, I want just to understand the process a little bit on, on like new things occurring while you're at the ranch. Um, on Sunday, when when the, the whole Barbara Honaker fuss and the you know the 50 yeah. state project came up, did did you do you get a copy of that story? Did you talk to Larry about oh, you no, talk I to anybody? Get, about I get it? the I get all the news. They have a full news. 
like a clipping service. I, I get it all. That that comes in in the morning, first thing. So, you you would see something like oh, that, yes. and then and then what would you do if you I wanted to the do horse. something? Oh, you kick the <laughs> horse. <laughs> But if you wanted to say, um, this is terrible, I need to find out about that. Yeah, I, I get on the phone and say, what is this? What's going on? And, and In this uh, case, did you do that? What? Uh, or because you were already coming Sunday here, you waited? Or no, no, oh no, right then I wanted to know. And I get the answers. And, and if you wanted someone to do something in relation to that, that is, you know, I want to talk to this woman or something, could they, would they, you would then transmit that to somebody here, like Jim Baker, and he would yes, set it up? Yes, there's for a meeting, yes. And the same sort of situation on the Marcus thing, you found out about that right away, and... Yes, I find it virtually instantly on that. And, uh, so I know that the State yeah, Department is on that. Do you, do you save decisions? Do you put in the back of your mind like major decisions and say, when I get out to the ranch, I'm going to think about this one? <laughs> I mean, you know, the way people compartmentalize things. Um, there are, well, there are decisions in which uh, the timing is determined by whether I need the time to make the decision or whether it's a decision that you, because of things that are going on, you want to wait. Uh, they, and, and everyone does and says, well, you know, this is going on and this, and, uh, and uh, we're getting a word from so-and-so, and maybe there's some controversy between various departments about it, and you want to wait and hear all of their reports, and it doesn't change your schedule at all. I say, okay, uh, I'll I'll settle that. To but the ranch is in the sort of place where you say, where you deliberately say, this is so isolated. Everyone isn't harassing me here. I can ride for several hours and think about this and pour oh, it over my Yes, mind. you can. It's very, yes. It's uh, the, the daily routine isn't there. Uh, can you give me one example of some decision that you oh. really thought out there? Um, a number of them. That's why I, I couldn't just pick one. There are a number of them that I've done that on. And, I've, and it, 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 for example, knowing that you're coming here and knowing that it's one facing you, and finally with all the routine going on there, yes, you say, I'll put that aside. I'll take that to the ranch with me. And now let's get on with the daily business. Okay. I promise not to ask any, any non ranch questions. <laughs> Can I ask you one question about women? Yes. <laughs> Do you, why are you so misunderstood on this issue? I if don't know. If you think know. you're misunderstood. Yes, I do. But I think part of it is very deliberate and political. Um, I think in the 19, very frankly, in the 1982 election, it was made apparent that some of those who are most active in this are most active if it's in behalf of Democratic candidates. And let me just point out, we had some fine Republican women candidates, and they didn't get any help or support, even though they were in, uh, well, Joseph Fenwick is, is an example. And uh, so I think this is part of it. But if they look back, the California record, I don't know of anyone else in the country that did this. Yes, it is true that I happen to disagree about the Equal Rights Amendment, but not because I think it would give women something of value to them, I'm surprised that more of them have not looked at how much mischief could be done, brought about by men, that could take advantage of that and then say, hey, you can't make me do this because uh, uh, labor regulations and so forth that are definitely there for the benefit of women. I could see. Uh, some troublemaking men, mischief makers, just say, well, uh, look, uh, I don't have to do that. They don't have to do that. The same would be true military. But mainly the main thing is, as I see it, it would put, it isn't an instant solution. It would put uh, 
things in the hands of the courts that belong in the hands of the legislature. If you thought so you there was discrimination under right. that, you would have to take, you'd have to file a suit. Now, what I set out in California when I was faced with this, and finally came to that decision about that, I said, but there should be equality. And so we started combing the statutes to find out where in state law might be based discriminations. And we found 14 laws that deliberately uh, discriminated against women. Uh, for example, a, a wife with her own money uh, could not invest that money without her husband's permission. Well, that's ridiculous. And so we got all these 14 changed. Then when I got to Washington, I had been dreaming about this and wanted the state had done it. And I said, let us in this whole federalism talk, let us go to the states, to the governors, the state legislature, and see if they won't set up the same kind of operation. Well, all 50 states did. Now, I understand if, if what Ms. Honiger said is right, that maybe some of them have dallied and so forth. There's a limit. Once I persuaded them to do this, you know, you can't force them. The states are sovereign in our system here. Uh, but maybe there is more we could do to encourage them. Well, there is. And I'm, I'm mad at uh, no, <laughs> What he's saying is what I said about I 15 know. minutes ago. I know. Now, uh, this was true, but we also started the Justice Department on this combing the federal laws. Well, that's quite a sizable undertaking. And absolutely, she is absolutely wrong in what she said about what we're doing there at the pace. It has come in, as I understand it, in three very voluminous packets. Well, out of the first one, we have already submitted recommendations to Senator Dole, Dole. who is following through now legislatively. These things have to be done by legislation. And there has been a kind of a full plate there for the legislature. And you 